Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today, I have got an early look at Kerbal Space Program version 1.05. This is a, an interim release that adds a bunch of new features, but it doesn't change the game engine on the back end. What kind of new features I hear you ask? Well, if we go to the start game screen, you can see that Val finally has a faceplate for her helmet. She no longer needs to hold her breath. Although, you shouldn't hold your breath in a vacuum because that will rupture your lungs. Although, uh, to be fair, Val is made of stronger stuff than almost any other Kerbal. Of course, with this release, there are some new parts and some redesigned old parts. The Weasley jet engine has had a visual overhaul. The Mark I cockpit is better and the radial intake also has uh, some changes to it. Everything flies just as well as it uh, used to. We've had some, of course, minor tweaks to the aerodynamics, but the real tweaks to the physics is all going to be in the thermal system, and it's kind of hard to review changes to the thermal system. But now we have the concept of core temperature in addition to the skin temperature and the internal temperature. Uh, this allows a whole bunch of new modelling, I guess, which means that you're not going to be blowing up your spacecraft nearly as often, or at least randomly. I will say that pr I have not yet had a part randomly explode through heating. You can see that the new Mark I cockpit has completely new interiors here. Looks pretty sweet as well. Of course, it still feels pretty claustrophobic compared to flying it in first-person mode. There we go, docking mode and everything there. Most of those buttons don't actually work. We have one new rocket engine in the form of the KS-25, which is supposed to be a space shuttle main engine. This has really huge vectoring capability, and you can see that this rocket, even with a payload sitting off the side, it is able to compensate for this using its very large vectoring range. So now it really becomes possible to actually build something approximating a real space shuttle and not have to spend hours balancing everything because of the limited vectoring range of other engines. But the other three new engines are all jet engines. We have the J404 Panther afterburning turbo jet thing or whatever. So this has a wet mode where you have an afterburner that uses tons of fuel and has a dry mode where it gets much better fuel efficiency. This is one of the new stock aircraft that uh, comes with the game. Now this Panther jet engine is all about being super high maneuverability. It's designed for fighter jets. It has very large gimballing range so you can make the aircraft turn, make them turn faster, make them more maneuverable. It has the afterburner for extra thrust at the expense of fuel efficiency. You can also see in this model there's some new tanks sitting underneath it. These are 0.625 meter liquid fuel tanks. And you might be happy to know that since we have a fuel tank of that size, we now have a jet engine which is that size. This is the smallest jet engine now, it'll probably be the first one you get. And now you can build some really tiny things. This is, uh, well, this was supposed to be something like a wingsuit, like the jet man from that A380 video that we saw the other day. This is a lot of fun, of course, flying these, but you can actually use them to build some far more sensible aircraft should you so choose. Now, while I'm on the ground here, notice now in EVA mode, we have a little nav ball at the bottom of the screen. So we have full nav ball capabilities uh, in EVA. That's going to really help those people who like to EVA from orbit. Now, the nav ball follows the camera and not the character, so you can turn around and pick out locations and things like that and exploit all the functionality of the nav ball without having to be inside an actual spacecraft. Moving swiftly on, we have a new 1.25 meter uh, crew cabin which fits two crew there see there in the middle we can turn the lights on and you know just see what we look like but from the interior and let me just see, look a couple of guys there able to look out the side window and try to get into the air this is not the best way to fly it but oh yeah he definitely doesn't like that 
But anyway, as you can see from the outside, this is one of those, uh, these are using the new smaller engines here. So it provides a much more realistic engine size for those people that thought that the full-size engine seemed quite a bit larger than the aircraft perhaps required. But speaking of large engines, we now have a two and a half meter jet engine. Now these are engines that, that are designed to be slung under wings. They're essentially high uh, bypass turbofans, much like those found in passenger jets. So they're not about going supersonic. They're about providing very high efficiency and very large thrusts for very large aircraft. Now, of course, one of the problems with large aircraft is sometimes stopping them in time, given the effectiveness of brakes on wheels. Well, these jets include thrust reversers, so you can basically adjust the internal geometry and use the engines to slow the aircraft down. Uh, and, of course, if you really keep things going, then really bad things happen, such as falling into the ground upside down. But hey, uh, the crew all survived, demonstrating that new thrust reverser technology, so it's not all bad. There are another couple of new parts which I, I'm not going to show you here. There's a new smaller ISRU unit for those people that want to mine materials. There's a smaller drill, there's another radiator, so those will no doubt help people that really like to go out and explore and prospect for raw materials in space. I, on the other hand, decided to try flying around with my wingsuit to see if I could fly inside an aircraft. As it happens, I something went wrong and my Kerbal disappeared at some point, so I was rather saddened by this. Not so sad that I would forget to tell you about the new contract features. So contracts now offer contextual contracts. That means if you have a space station, it won't give you a million contracts to say launch a new space station. It'll say launch a new module for your space station, which means that you're going to build out your stuff over time rather than adding to Kessler syndrome. There's a whole bunch of new part test contracts, uh, although none of the tests require you to smash an aircraft into another one, as I have just done. But smashing one aircraft into the other could cause uh, problems that might require, say, an emergency landing. And as you know, in Kerbal Space Program, if you have to perform a landing, you do not ever want to perform it on the ocean, on the water, because water is vastly more deadly than rock in Kerbal Space Program. But no more shall we suffer the indignity of our rockets being torn asunder by hitting water at a walking pace or above. No, now you can actually ditch your aircraft in water, assuming you are careful. So I'm just uh, showing this here. I've got my engines running right now. I'm deploying the flaps to maximize my lift. And when I get very close to the water, what we'll just do is we'll cut the power there we go, and now we're just going to hold it just above the water and then try to bleed off the speed and gently deposit the aircraft and its crew into the water here. Uh, hopefully it won't tear the aircraft apart like it has before. Here we go, seven, six, five, four, and we're touching the water. Oh, brilliant, a perfect landing. And not only that, you can build aircraft that are capable of landing and taking off from water. Here we have the gull. It's actually pretty close to a seaplane. Those tanks are empty because buoyancy is correctly calculated. A ah, bit of a heavy landing there, but we were able to put it down just fine. Look, no damage. And from here, of course, we uh, can get ourselves set up for takeoff. Just make sure my flaps are correct. Do I put that one as a flap? I'm not sure. Never mind. Let's just throttle 100% and let this go. Previously, it was possible to build seaplanes, but you had to exploit the fact that the air intakes, for some reason, were incredibly buoyant. Now, you can actually have any part work with the correct level of buoyancy, and indeed, you can adjust the buoyancy by moving fuel in and out of it. But that is just a very small part of quite a substantial update, considering that it's a 0 .0.0.1 uh, bump. The 1.1 release that we had been looking forward to 
isn't coming yet. That's the one that's going to add 64-bit support. It's going to add Unity 5, multi-threaded physics. Uh, it's going to add tons of back-end stuff, but it's also going to completely refactor the way the back-end works for the game. So we're going to have to wait for that. But in the meantime, this release is pretty substantial. Don't be fooled by the small bump. This is actually a really major release that we should all be very excited for. Hope you look forward to it as much as me. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>